Mary McLeod Bethune founded Bethune Cookman College from a dumpster with about five dollars. Let me tell you how our ancestors used to thirst for freedom and liberation. That black woman started holding class at a dumpster because it was the only place she could find to teach our children. She couldn't afford to pay for space, so she taught them at a trash dump. She used to cook brownies and cookies and Queen Mother Mary McLeod Bethune would go around selling brownies and cookies to raise money for Bethune Cookman College. Queen Mother Mary McLeod Bethune even used to make her own ink for the ink pen, brothers and sisters. Because she didn't have no money, she made the pencils, she made the pens. And from that came Bethune Cookman College. Here's what I want to say to my brother, Ed Reed. And I don't put him in the same boat as Deion Sanders. Deion gassed the kids up and cut out the minute a Snow Bunny campus offered him more money. I thought Dion was there for a movement. Dion was there for money. I thought Dion was there for a movement. Dion was there for money. I don't want to hear no crap about I was underpaid because you could have took that to the State Board of Higher Education in Mississippi. Don't give me that crap. That's crap. That's propaganda. If you had a problem with people stealing money on the campus, why didn't you take it to the Board of Governors of Jackson State? Why didn't you take it to the State Chancellor of Education? Why didn't you take your concerns to the State Board of Higher Education? That had nothing to do with it. You wanted to leave anyway. You spent your own money. That was a tax write-off. You spent your own money. That was a tax write-off. You spent your own money. That was a tax write-off. Miss me with the nonsense. You can fool some of the people all the time. You can fool all the people some of the time. You can't fool Dr. Umar none of the time. You can fool some of the people all the time and all the people some of the time. You can't spend Dr. You can't fool Dr. Umar none of the time. Ed Reed. I understand where you're coming from, brother. You're not wrong in what you are saying. If what you say is true and the students had a protest today at Bethune Cookman College, the students had a protest today at Bethune Cookman College. The students had a protest today at Bethune Cookman College. So I know you were telling the truth. Brother Ed Reed. But Brother Ed Reed, I want to say this, brother. I want you to consider three things, Brother Ed, and any other ex-NFL or NBA greats who decide to coach at an HBCU. Any other ex-NFL or ex-NBA greats who decide to coach at an HBCU. I want you to consider three things. No disrespect to none of you. No disrespect to none of you, but I want you to consider three things. Number one, why are those colleges in the financial shape they are in? Brother Ed Reed, Deion Sanders, and everybody else. Why are the HBCUs in the condition that they are in. Let's start right there. Let's, let me get a swig of water on this. Why are the HBCUs in the condition that they are in? You know why? Because NFL superstars never donated to them. 
NBA superstars never donated to them. Rappers and singers and actors never donate or hardly donate to them. The black celebrity class never systemically invested in the HBCU. So no disrespect, Brother Ed. Part of this is a case of the pot calling the kettle black. Part of this is a case of the pot calling the kettle black. The HBCUs are struggling because black celebrities don't invest in them. So when y'all show up to coach, because they don't have the money, it's not clean enough. They don't have the right facilities. The athletic department doesn't look like University of Colorado. The athletic department don't look like Alabama or Georgia. But there's a history to that, Brother Ed. There's a reason to that, Brother Ed. I'm not disrespecting you, my brother, at all. You didn't cut out like Dion. You didn't do that. They withdrew your contract. But the point that I'm making, my brother, how are you going to make it better by tearing them down on social media. How are you gonna make it better by tearing them down on social media? Here's what I'm saying, Brother Ed. Here's what I'm saying, Brother Ed. Brother Ed Reed, I'm saying, I would like for you to sit down with the board of trustees at Bethune Cookman College. I would like you to request a meeting with the board of trustees. Bethune Cookman is private, if I'm not mistaken. Bethune Cookman is private. I don't believe it's a part of the Florida State system of higher education. But in either event, I want you to meet with the trustees. Ask them, are they comfortable with this? Ask them, what changes are they willing to make? In other words, brother, follow the chain of command. And if the chain of command proves that the higher ups who make the financial decisions, if the chain of command reveals, brother Ed, that the higher ups who make the decisions don't care, then you blast them on social media, brother Ed. Then you blast them on social media, brother Ed. But I think you owe it to Queen Mother Mary McLeod Bethune. I think you owe it to our ancestors. I think you owe it to our students in our community, not just you, but all black celebrities. Go up the chain of command because the people you had your issues with, they don't make the real decisions. The people you have your issues with, they don't make the real decisions. Sit down with the board of governors. Sit down with the board of trustees. Sit down with the board of directors and see what they have to say about it. And if you don't get no recourse, brother, then you expose them. But I really wish, brother Ed, you would have went to the board of trustees first, my brother. Because here's my concern, brother Ed Reed. And I'm a fan of Ed Reed. I'm a fan of Ed Reed. So it's no disrespect. The problem I have with you and Dion, the problem I have with you and Dion, you didn't cut out like Dion, so you're not in the same boat as he did, okay? But the problem I have is I don't appreciate successful, rich black men criticizing struggling black colleges. I cannot accept that. Rich black men have no business criticizing Historically black colleges when you know that you all did not invest in these colleges and that's why they're in the condition that they are in. I'm not putting all this on Ed Reed. I'm not putting it all on Deion Sanders. I'm saying as a group, black celebrities have failed the HBCU. As a group, black celebrities have failed the HBCU. So if black celebrities have failed the HBCUs, how can black celebrities go to the HBCUs and criticize them for not operating up the standard when they don't have the money to operate up to standard? And the reason they don't have the money to operate up to standard is because black celebrities have not systemically invested in our HBCUs. 
And it's going to get worse, Brother Ed. It's going to get worse, Brother Ed, because Barack Obama and Joe Biden, two Democrats, Barack Obama and Joe Biden, two Democrats, Barack Obama and Joe Biden, two Democrats, change the name of the HBCU White House Initiative. They change the name of the HBCU White House Initiative to the Minority Serving Institutions Initiative. Minority Serving Institutions Initiative. Minority Serving Institution Initiative. So more money is going to be taken from the HBCUs. They're going to lose more money, brother. It's going to get worse, not better, Brother Ed. It's going to get worse, not better, Brother Ed. But what I'm going to say, no disrespect. I want my black NFL Hall of Famers to ask themselves a question. I want Ed Reed and Dion, and I don't put them in the same boat. I do not put Ed Reed and Dion in the same boat, but I want them to ask themselves a question. Are you suffering from black celebrity narcissism on some level? I'm not being disrespectful. I'm asking a question because my psychological analysis, my psychological analysis, my psychological analysis requires that I ask the question, are black athletes, ex-NFL Hall of Famers, Ed Reed is a Hall of Famer, Deion Sanders is a Hall of Famer, they're millionaires, they're celebrities. Are you suffering from a degree of celebrity narcissism where you expect a red carpet to be rolled out for you like it was at your PWI, like it was in the NFL. Historically, black colleges don't have the money to roll out a red carpet for you like they did at the University of Miami. They can't do that. They can't do it like the Baltimore Ravens did it. They can't do it like the Atlanta Falcons did it. Are you expecting a certain level of ambiance And if you don't get it, you will abandon our children because after you leave, black children are still there. After you quit, black children are still there. When Deion Sanders left Jackson State, most of the players were still there. So my question is, are you too good? Are you too good? to go through the struggle with our children. I'm not being disrespectful. I love my brother, but I'm asking a question. Is black celebrity narcissism playing a role? Because what I cannot allow is to stand by and let black athletes badmouth HBCUs while white people are trying to close them down. I cannot stand by and let black Hall of Famer, millionaire, ex-NFL greats talk bad about my HBCUs. I'm going to say mine because they belong to us. I can't stand by and let you millionaire athletes talk bad about a black college when white folks is trying to shut the whole HBCU system down. The point that I'm making. The point that I am making, Brother Ed, Dion, is if you know there's a war against the HBCU, if you know there's a war to defund and defunct, there is a war to defund and defunct. There is a war to defund and defunct the HBCU, if you know that. If you speak in publicly and negatively about these schools, 
Are you not adding ammunition to this racist movement to shut them all down anyway? They're already being defunded by the White House. They're already being defunded by Congress. They're already underfunded by black celebrities. Are you not adding fuel to this fire that wants to destroy the HBCU movement? I just want you to consider that, Brother Ed. I just want you to consider that. Getting on social media, Deion Sanders, getting on social media and talking badly about the HBCU because you want to take money from a white college. Getting on social media, talking bad about an HBCU just because you want to cut and run to Colorado with 1.6% black students. You're causing more damage than the so-called help you claim you gave. You causing more damage. Because the white power structure will take your sound clips, brother Ed. The white power structure will take your sound clips, your sound bites, Deion Sanders, and they will add that. They'll go get snow puppy Candace Owens. They'll go get snow puppy Candace Owens. They'll go get snow puppy Candace Owens to do a documentary on how HBCUs are failing America. That's what they'll do. They'll pay Candace Snow Puppy Owens to go do a documentary on how HBCUs are no good for America. Don't let them use your voice against us because here's what I want to tell you, Brother Ed. Dion, any other ex-NFL great who wants to come coach. The colleges you come into were built from nothing. The colleges you come into were built from nothing. Compare what you saw at Jackson State, Dion. Compare what you saw at Bethune-Cookman, Ed Reed. I want you to compare that to what the first class of students at Tuskegee Institute under Booker T. Washington had to experience. When, when, the, when the Tuskegee students showed up, they didn't have no buildings. When the first class of students showed up at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, they had nothing. Booker T. Washington made them pull up their sleeves. Booker T. made them pull up their sleeves. They built their own buildings, made their own bricks, sold their own clothes, cooked their own food. This is what black children did at a black college more than 100 years ago. And we crying over some trash. Over a hundred years ago, black students was making their own dormitories with their own hands and we crying over trash. Somebody broke in my office. Somebody broke in my car. All I'm saying, please don't add more fuel to the fire because I'm going to tell you like this. I would rather a black student go to a dilapidated, underfunded, somewhat dirty, if that's what you want to call it, HBCU and go through the struggle of being at that HBCU. I would rather my son go to Bethune Cookman and learn who he is and learn the legacy of Mary McLeod Bethune and learn what it means to be a black man. I would rather he go through that than drop out and go to a white school. I would rather he go through the hell of an HBCU than drop out and go to a white school. My problem with you athletes, you're not turning your back on the school. You're turning your back on our children. You're turning your back on our children. So what? It's dirty. So what? Go up the chain of command, protest. If you got to leave, you got to leave. But at least you fought. Deion Sanders ain't go up the chain of command. Deion Sanders ain't meet, asked to meet with the board of trustees. Deion Sanders didn't go to the Mississippi State Board of Higher Education because Deion Sanders wanted to leave. 
He wanted comfort, celebrity narcissism, black male celebrity narcissism. That's what got to Dion. I'm not saying it got to Ed Reed, but brother Ed, blasting the HBCU on social media, my brother. That's not the way to go. That's not the way to go. And here's the question I have. Our black children, some of them didn't have fathers in their life. Our black children, some of them didn't have fathers in their life. They meet a Deion Sanders. They meet a Ed Reed. They perk up. I got me a father figure. And not only a father figure, I got me a celebrity. And then you walk out on them too. For money and less than perfect working conditions. For money and less than perfect working condition. What does that say to a black boy? He's 18 or 19 at Jackson State. He's 18 or 19 at Bethune Cookman. He's 18 and 19 at Jackson State. He's 18 and 19 at Bethune Cookman and he sees Deion Sanders leave for money. Ed Reed leaves because well, they withdrew his contract so it's slightly different, but Metaphorically speaking, Ed Reed left for less than working, less than stellar working conditions. He says, damn. What am I worth to my own people? I know I'm not worth nothing to white people, but the black HBCU student says, what am I worth to my own people? What am I worth to my own people? These black men came here. We thought because they cared about us. We thought they came because they cared about us. But when the money ain't enough, they will leave me. When the working conditions ain't enough, they will leave me. And the black boy says to himself, Ed Reed, I have to eat the food here. You don't. Ed Reed, I have to sleep in the dorms here. You don't. Ed Reed, I have to shower in the bathrooms here. You don't. When you leave me, big brother Ed, I'm still going to be here, bro. I'm still going to be here. And now I'm hurt because I feel like you kind of feel you took good to go through this with me. Dion more than Ed. Ed is more grassroots. Dion is bougie. Ed is a little better. All I'm saying, I'm not disrespecting nobody. I'm just saying, yo, I would rather you not come than come and leave. I would rather you not come at all than come and leave. And I would rather you not come. And I'd rather you not come than bad mouth to college. If you got a bad mouth to college, don't go, bro. There's a war against HBCUs. There's a war. We cannot afford black celebrities to be publicly blasting and bad mouthing the colleges we still got because we're losing them. We're losing them. I tried to buy one seven years ago. We're losing them. Come to help or don't come at all. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to hear no more black football players, basketball players talking about no damn HBCUs when you know you and your fellow NFL alumni have not done nothing to help them. How are you going to criticize black colleges that y'all never helped? How are you going to criticize black colleges that y'all never helped? That's hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. Black NFL players don't invest in black colleges. NBA players don't invest in black colleges, but y'all going to criticize them? Y'all going to criticize them? That's all I got to say on that. I understand Ed Reed. I'm not throwing him under the bus. They withdrew his contract, but I really wish he would have tried first because... Some of those black boys are going to be hurt forever. 
Not just the ones on the football team, the ones on that campus who get a chance to interact with you. Deion Sanders, he hurt young men when he left. He crushed them, man. I spoke with him. I spoke with about 12 different players on that Jackson State team, and they all said the same thing, and I spoke with them all separately. They was hurt by what Deion Sanders did. You just going to pack up and leave for money?